My first book, 2012, Crossing the Bridge to the Future, opens up on Mount Shasta during the Harmonic Convergence of 1987 with an acid trip. And I want to read from that section. As the acid came on, our environment blended into the song. Muted bird chirps, the hush of grass, tiny susurrations of branch, limb, and movement. We played the world, and the world played us, each wah-wah boomeranging our consciousness out and back around in rhythmic waves that soaked us deeper into all things. Then the acid hit harder as a dull throbbing in my gut. The week's fast had shrunk my stomach. Gripped by nausea, isn't that why I swore off this? I bent a final note on the kalimba that faded as the silence rushed over us like an inland sea. Wop, 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 wop. The women meandered away. My abdomen growled. Breathing became aspirating through a wet t-shirt that elongated as my legs were drawn down through flashing layers of soil while my torso shot up into a sky that strobed powder blue and cobalt. I was stretched to inhabit some phantom body I seemed to possess in another dimension. Blanched from that peculiar blend of hyper-alertness and debilitating exhaustion common to both fasting and tripping, I levitated above grass spackled with paintbrush and lupin, up and over my cramped life back in the city. Elizabeth and I, two contorted gnomes locked in anger on Rose Street, achieving nothing, touching nothing, arguing nothing, nada, nada, nada. I was speared by an anguish that went far beyond Elizabeth into some nameless void that has haunted me since I can remember. Shivering, I scanned the horizon. Somewhere were angels. We were on earth and I was alive, wasn't I? The mountain was calling. What in heaven's name is that guy so worked up about down there? How could I let myself be lured into the same trap over and over? Why do we fight? Why can't we open our hearts? Why can't we be the people we really are? What gets in the way every time? How had the lusty promise of our early days in the nest drained to such wasteland? I licked my parched lips, recalling the cinnamony taste of Elizabeth that September, how willingly seductive her youthful body had been, the smell of clean sheets below the window propped open to the oaken smoke of New England autumn. Where does love go when it goes? What demonic force sucks the dreams of lovers who fused in the orgasmic rush of blood and fire that pales away in the frozen breakfast light of morning. My stomach growled like a trapped beast. The sun hid behind a cloud, and I realized with a shudder that I knew this place. Something about it was familiar. I'd glimpsed it in threshold moments, lightning flashes, hypnagogic states between waking and sleeping. This was a place I once inhabited. I'd seen it before. In fact, I'd seen all this before, even seen myself on the mountain realizing I'd seen it. We are so much more than ourselves, said a voice, so much more. I knew this. I knew better than to get caught in yet another version of who did what to who game. Hadn't I seen it? I felt certain I had. I seemed to recall some vow I'd made about it. At some point, the mechanics of how we shrink ourselves, I'd seen how we harden our hearts in blame and judgment, how that's a choice we can unchoose. Yes, I was sure I'd broken into this truth with stunning radical clarity at some earlier moment. I dimly recalled sending myself a time release capsule, an auto hypnotic suggestion to alert myself the next time I stumbled into the trap, but I couldn't recall the actual message. Then the capsule released, and I remembered, it's all meant to be, everything. Every wrenching convolution of blame and judgment, 
every retreat into our own corner of the ring, every forgetting to be the love we are, every snarled up tangle of whatever, even all this is somehow supposed to be. We're not meant to remain pristine, virginal, pure, not meant to cling to angels. We're supposed to fall off the mountain. I couldn't remember why this was so, but I knew that it was.